Deb. We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Monday, Veterans Day. <coughs> Excuse me, taking your phone call, 737-7587. If you want to join John Crinson's with us, Operation Stand Down. And one of the points we were talking about going into the break was just the issue of finding veterans who maybe aren't seeking help and they've kind of fallen off the radar. All right, that, that's the trick. I mean, once they come to seek help, hopefully they're getting it. Mm -hmm. But how do you go, John, about finding these veterans that are back there and maybe the family has lost track of them or they don't really have a family and they're homeless mm -hmm. and they're off the radar? Yeah, and I'll tell you, for the, for the traditional homeless veteran, um, that's not as difficult as the uh, veteran who's struggling and isolating who's not homeless. So, oh. for example, the, the homeless veterans, we can typically find them through our partnerships with the Mission, Salvation Army, Room in the Inn, uh, programs like that. We know the encampments uh, or places where, sure. where, where, where folks, just the general population. Well, I mean, we literally go out there and canvas we will it? Go, we will go out there and canvas it. Uh, I we mean, how willing are they when you're out there you walking know? and you're in a tent and you're like, yeah, I wasn't, the, you know, there's a reason I'm here, buddy, just leave me alone. I That's mean, what right. do they do when you run? How it do takes you time it? for some. You okay. know, and some are willing right away, and others it takes a while, uh, and then they may move on before you get a chance to get mm -hmm. connected with them again, or they move to another town or whatever, or others will stay in their quasi permanent location, and you just have to continue to build a relationship of trust with them. Mm -hmm. But it's the veteran who's isolating, who's not homeless technically, maybe what we call couch surfing, where they're staying with a family member maybe for a few weeks or a few months, that burns out, so it's time for them to move on somewhere else. Uh, you you know, we've even had one veteran that came to our program, and he'd been doing this couch surfing uh, deal for a, for probably close to a couple of years, and he was at the last place he could go, mm -hmm. and he'd actually been kicked out of the friend's house. But the friend said, "Look, you can stay in the backyard, you know, because I don't want to just throw you out altogether." But he was it was it was a disruption <coughs> to the family that sure. he was staying with. But you can stay in a tent, mm -hmm. you know, in the backyard. Yeah, you know, I've heard of cases like that. That's right. right. That's right. So for trying to find those folks is the is the bigger challenge. Challenge. And frankly, one way that we've been more successful is through social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we're finding that to be, uh, uh, just over the last couple of years, uh, a great source for us to get connected to folks. And it's also one of the reasons we're trying to broaden our, our mission out at Operation Stand Down Tennessee is so we can connect with veterans. They may not come for help, which often is the case, mm -hmm. but if they see our location and our agency as a place just to get connected uh, to veterans uh, or to things in the community, that may tease them out. So, for example, when our renovation at our service center at 12th and Edge Hill is completed sometime this spring, we'll have amenities that we'll, that our intent is to attract veterans to the campus, maybe for a social event, uh, but something that's not necessarily, hey, you need a social service, mm -hmm. you know, come get help, uh -huh. but more like, hey, this is a place where I can go and be connected with Let's veterans hang and hang out. Yeah. We had a veteran tell us one time, he goes, you know, all I want to do, John, is just go, I'd like to, I want to lift weights, I want to drink coffee and shoot the breeze, you know, with my buds. You know, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And so we're trying to find ways, how do we do that? Because if we can do that, then we can expose them to the services that we have uh, and the benefits that are available to them that they either may not be aware of or too just not ready to come and ask for on their own. I mean, what he just described, that sounds like a good plan. And you get them yeah. in there. So once they come in and, they, and, and, and hopefully the new facility will be able to address that very thing. Yes. Are, you, are you guys going to have weights? Well, I don't know. We're working on that. <laughs> Someone needs to donate some universal we, machines we, to you. We, we do. We're, try, we're, we're trying to figure but, all that piece out. And it may happen in stages, you know, now, but, that's, but that's the path. Does some of that kind of stuff happen already? And maybe it's just for the older veterans in these cases at the American Legion posts. I'm, I'm trying to get a handle yeah. on the, the role that Legion posts play for veterans. Is, is that more of the older veterans? Is that fair to say that? It or? is. It's a generation difference. Okay, okay. You know, and where it crosses you. generations is the American Legion and VFWs, they're fantastic for, for advocating for legislation and things that help veterans' issues, you know, at the national level. But I've been level. to some of the Legion but posts the post, themselves. When you go right. in there, they are almost like a clubhouse. You'll go in there and there'll they be are. some of these men in there and women and they'll be sitting there having coffee and there yeah. might be a dartboard on the wall. Right, right, right. And there might be some music playing and they're usually kind of dark. I don't know why they don't have a lot of windows on those posts, but I mean, it's just, but 
they're in there and they're, yeah. and they're quite happy and they're sharing with each other. Yeah, what we're finding with the younger generations, and particularly the, the millennial type generation, yeah. is they want to go somewhere that's more open and spacious. Okay. Uh, the darkness, you know, you know is, what I mean? is an it's obstacle to them. It <laughs> is. But they also want to get out and do stuff. So they're okay. less inclined to come and want to, you know, sit in a clubhouse um, and, and shoot the breeze as opposed to go out and let's do something together. So one of the things that we've done is uh, we've started just in the last year or two, we put on an event a monthly. They call it a meetup because I think that's the millennial terms for when you go out and socialize. We do this meetup at Redneck Riviera. They're fantastic mm -hmm. hosts for us. Mm -hmm. And we have no agenda that, you know, John doesn't get up or no one from the team gets up and gives the five minute spiel. It's like, hey, look, just come downtown. It's fun. You know, link up with veterans. But we have staff that are there mingling and I try to be there as often as not. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we'll just get to know, you know, some of these folks and we'll make sure that people are getting introduced to other people. And they like that. It's, it's an open air environment. Um, oh, that's it's, great. It's, it's, it's got it's got more of that feel and vibe that a millennial is used to mm -hmm. than what you're going to find at the American Legion VFW. It's, it's a generational difference in terms of a destination. And I, frankly, we're still trying to figure out what is going to be that American Legion or VFW for the millennial right. generation. That's and we're all still working on trying to figure that out. You might be on out. the right path there right now with what you're doing, though. Well, we but think we are, you know, yeah. and some things we try don't work and other things we try do mm -hmm. work. The social media is working. The mm -hmm. Redneck Riviera experience right. is working. And uh, now we're, you know, how, how can we bring them to our location at 12th and Edge Hill and try to get that working? So. Interesting. Let's take a call from Jim, um, who yep. just joined us. Jim, good morning. Hi, Jim. Yes, good morning. Thank morning. you for taking my call. Sure. I got on kind of late here. I didn't get this gentleman's name, but I do want to thank him for his service. I'm a Korean War veteran, and uh, I have all my medical services with the VA, and I couldn't, I couldn't ask for better service. I've been treated extremely well there. And um, my next question is, uh, I have a couple of days a week where I could do some volunteer work, and I'd like to uh, get his phone number. And I got the location, but I'd like to get the phone number where I could uh, contact them. And again, thank you for your service. Yes, sir. A privilege to serve. Thank you very much. You too, Jim. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your, your service. Well, and it's good that he put to that point. A lot of veterans yeah. like him want to give back and help others. So what kind of opportunities do you have or are you taking volunteers? We do. We do. Okay. So we uh, we can take volunteers that are individuals and many times we'll bring in groups uh, to do some group projects and it can be anything uh, such as assembling, um, you know, food baskets to uh, uh, to working at our, at our Welcome Center front desk yeah, and helping veterans people. as they come in. So we also have seven homes for veterans in transition, and they can do that. So and there's they can, the number there, There's right? our numbers right there. So, uh, you know, we also have a service center in Clarksville, and uh, we've had that operating. We'll celebrate our five-year anniversary of being fully running in Clarksville uh, this January. Mm -hmm. uh, so Makes we're sense very excited about Fort that. Campbell, Absolutely, right? and yeah. that's part of our mission of, of trying to get, reach veterans early in their transition to the civilian world. Sure. Well, exactly. just the numbers up there right now, Jim, and others, uh, as you see, depending on where you live, but the Nashville campus, 248. 1981 and uh, yeah that's excellent um, yeah and, and just tell folks that answer the phone that you want to speak with our volunteer coordinator or that you're interested in volunteer opportunities you know he talked about and and it's neat we do shows sometimes on the VA and we get a variety of calls yeah. there are some that really complain about the experience they've had and then there are many others like Jim who yeah. say that you know their needs have been fulfilled what what yeah. is your I, mean, I guess that's probably kind of the way it is I and mean, the VA's had its problems you know that um, how do you think it's going right now or what's needed what would you think needs to change yeah well I'm glad to hear him call with with that positive mm -hmm. feedback we, we have a great partnership with the VA um, the the director we're very fortunate the director here at Tennessee Valley Health Services or Middle Tennessee is passionate and she's talented and just phenomenal I think she's done a great job is that the um, VA that's hospital over there at Bandy? At Bandy. Vanderbilt and yeah. York. Right. Yeah, yeah, at York. York. And right. she will right. go right. back and forth. She has offices at both of them okay. as the director, which I think is, is, is quite significant, being present, you know, where, mm -hmm. where all the needs are. You know, the, the, the VA, uh, they're, they're under-resourced, and they're probably one of the largest bureaucracies in the mm -hmm. world, and so it's hard, it's hard to turn it. Uh, but I think 
by and large, uh, veterans get very good care and sure. have a positive experience, but there's too many of those that, that do not, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a challenge, you know, I think for a long time to come, especially as, uh, the you know, the, the VA expanded the scope of veterans that it could take on without having the, the requisite staff added to it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and that was some 15 some odd years ago, so they're still trying just to catch up with that. Yep. So it's a big challenge, a big challenge, but I just, just from working firsthand with VA folks day in and day out, um, the, the, the vast majority are passionate and really want to do everything they can to, uh, for these veterans. They do the best they can, but you're they right, do. they probably yep. just need more help because that, there are a it. lot seeking services. Listen, we'll take a break on that note, and Jim, thanks for your call. The line's open, 737-7587. We're talking about Veterans Day and some of the services out there, Operation Stand Down. We'll take more of your calls, more of our conversation with our guest on this, which of course is Veterans Day right after this. Stay with us.